if I'm gonna be able to pick this up. Okay. okay. Hello, welcome or welcome. I didn't put deodorant on. And nothing is sweatier work than trying on sweaters. Okay. In the name. It's my favorite video of the year. This is everything that I knit in 2023. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Knits by Mandy. My name is Amanda. I'm a knitter based in Washington, D.C. This is my two-year YouTube anniversary. I use this channel to talk all about my knitting. I do monthly podcast episodes. I do yarn window shopping videos. I talk about my favorite movies and shows and what sweaters I knit for the cast. We have a good time on this channel. I'm so excited to do a year in review of what I worked on this year. I'll be very honest and candid with my review of the yarns and the patterns and how much wear I get out of the item, which I think is one of the most important things when we're reevaluating our knits and looking at our knit closet. Without further ado, let's just get into it. The first thing that I made this year was a set of accessories. This is the Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit and a set of fingerless gloves that I followed a Well Love Knits YouTube tutorial for. I get so much wear out of these two items. I think the Sophie shawl was a bit of a polarizing object because people were like, it's a garter stitch triangle. But then on the other side of the conversation, people were like, yeah, it's a garter stitch triangle. I knit these in a merino cashmere nylon yarn. So it is 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, and 10% cashmere. This is in Magpie Fibers Swanky DK in the color Bougie Beaver. And because of the material that I chose, I found these pieces to be very versatile. I'll usually style my scarf like this and it fits really nicely under a jacket. I don't have to like shove it in there. It covers my neck enough, but it's also not frigid where I live. Like I said, I live in Washington DC. The world is getting warmer and I find these to be enough most of the time. The fingerless gloves, you can tell I'm getting a lot of wear from the pilling on these. I also wear them a lot and they're great for running around. My mom and I refer to clothes like this as kicking around clothes, but especially when I was home for the holidays and I was driving more, they're so nice to have on, like you can just keep them on in the car, you can go run your errands and like not have to worry about these without overheating. A fingerless mitt was what I didn't know I needed this year, but they're, they're so useful and I just love the color. I think it's very, sophisticated. It's almost like a rose gold color. And I love the drape that you get from the shawl in the merino nylon cashmere. So these are the first two items. I really like them. They're simple, but like simple is good for a reason sometimes. Definitely workhorses of my winter accessories. It's interesting because I'm also starting to knit some accessories and I think at the beginning of the year I'm in a accessory mode. It's like a nice break to take from all the sweater knitting. The next item that I have does not have the ends woven in, but this is the Chelsea Tooth by Kiyomi Bergen. It's made with Neighborhood Fiber Co. DK and Surrey Alpaca in the colorway Mulberry Hill. I got this yarn when I went to Rhinebeck back in 2022, and I wanted to make something special with it. I like this hat, but I don't get a lot of wear out of it. I had some hat issues this spring. I tried making the Oslo hat by Petite Knit and basically I found what I do is I'm too afraid of having that little like excess fabric right here. I end up cutting my hats too short but then I look like, I don't know, I just don't, it's not the look that I'm going for. It makes me look too round headed and it also doesn't come all the way over my ears when I fold the rim up. I think it's a very cute pattern. I like to remake it the right way. <laughs> I love the yarn. The yarn is so beautiful. Um, definitely like a, one of those kind of like splurge items. Pattern is this lace. I would go check out the Ravelry page. It doesn't come through. Between the Surrey Alpaca and I think the variegation in the yarn, you just like don't get, I think, the full effect of this hat. So I think it could have been better served maybe by a different pattern. The pattern and the yarn don't suit each other, but I think separately they both could be very good. So that is where I think I went wrong with the Chelsea Toque. I do wear it sometimes, but it just doesn't work the way that I want it to. Like I just want one good hat and I think that is on my wish list for 2024 is like 
just knit one hat that I like and that fits. We are at our first garment of 2024. I don't remember which order I knit the accessories in and the sweater, but it was all around like what's called Q1 of last year. And this is the Whitmore Cardigan by Amy Loudon of Taylor Studios. And it's knit in Hobbies, Mayflower, Easy Care Merino, and Kid silk. I don't wear this sweater. I've worn it twice and I think it's for a couple of reasons. One, I went into knitting this sweater knowing it's not really my style. It is a gorgeous circular lace yoke cardigan and I felt really called to the lace although I'm not sure I'm really like a lace girl in this way. It's very like feminine and frilly in a way that my style doesn't always lean towards. Maybe with the combination of the yarn it's just like too outside of my normal comfort zone. Second thing is I don't love the fit. I feel like when I button it up it looks strange. I don't like where it hits on my waist. Like I was just thinking before I started filming maybe a way to save this would be to crop it because as you can see, like my jeans come up here and that's that's usually where my jeans hit. I was like tucking it in at some points and oh, I just don't like how it looks. I hate the term flattering, but like I don't feel good when I wear it, you know? It's one part, the style just in general, but also maybe how circular, circular yoke sweaters fit. There's no short row shaping. I know Amy of Knee Knits made this and she tried to incorporate some short row shaping, but I think to not much avail for her. I don't know. There's something about it that just doesn't sing for me, unfortunately. Here's what I'm thinking, potentially. Maybe if the sleeves don't taper, you have more like a wide sleeve and then I crop it, it could feel a little bit more young and fresh. The other thing is I'm just sweating wearing this. It does not get cold enough where I live to justify having a lot of mohair sweaters. I find this like suffocatingly warm. What I've learned this year is I've really enjoyed the breathability that 100% wool offers. I run warmer so I need that like ventilation going through. Maybe this will be a sweater rehab project because it's not something that I feel like I want to frog especially because like not gonna separate the wool from the mohair like they're together we have to accept that they are wet at this point. I just don't feel good in this. It's not a silhouette I would normally knit for myself or buy ready to wear not that I really buy ready to wear sweaters anymore. This is my least worn sweater out of the four that I've made this year. That is the Whitmore cardigan. I knit a size small. Maybe we can do a little rehab on it this year. So just a note on the mohair if you're curious. It's somewhere in between probably like a knitting for olive mohair and drops kids silk which I used last year and I hated. I thought it was so scratchy. This you can feel on your skin, but you don't want to necessarily scratch it off. However, I'm not like dying to wear it also. So that's another factor I think is the quality of the mohair that keeps me from wanting to make it. That was the first of three cardigans that I made this year. This was the year of the cardigan. That was the first cardigan I actually ever made. The second one is the Mauricia cardigan by Vert and Rose Knitting. I knit the size three, if I remember correctly. And I used Knitting for Olive, Dusty Artichoke, Held Double, the Merino Held Double. And this is a world of a difference as far as fit and wearability. I would say I get much more wear out of this sweater than the Whitmore cardigan. It still has a very feminine feel, but I think I can, maybe with the color and kind of the playfulness of the daisy buttons, I can work it more easily into my wardrobe. And just putting the two on, the feeling of this yarn is just way better to me. It, it feels much more cozy and warm and like a hug. And again, it's wool. So to me, it's more breathable. The Knitting for All of Merino also, I feel like holds up beautifully. I know Merino is like a softer wool, but really I'm just noticing like maybe some light pilling on the sleeves. This is a raglan cardigan, which also I think helps with the fit a little bit better. And it's knit in this all over like faux cabling pattern, which I just like think is so delightful. It's so nice. I love the feeling of a textured garment. There's something very cozy to me about it and like comforting. Like it reminds me 
often of like baby blankets <laughs> like that you would have when you were young and I like that about this. This is also more cropped. The sleeves are kind of bracelet length which I think is just darling and that was I think due more to yarn chicken than anything else but it worked out nicely and it's a sweater that it's not fussy right you don't have to worry about long sleeves if you're like cooking or when you're working I like that about it something I would do differently is my button spacing is if you look closely it's not all right like I think these two are really close together and I think I would also do bigger buttons definitely go back and re-space them and redo them but they do not stay buttoned so I have to wear this open so that is like yeah that's another lesson that I learned um button size does matter you knit the button band as you go so that might have to be like something to do with the button size or the buttonhole size but yeah I learned like these buttons not not big enough to support the sweater. Overall this was a huge win. I got to finish this and wear this for my birthday this year and it's just a very comforting cozy sweater. I don't think I wore it a lot in the spring but then I kind of refound it back in my closet again when it got colder and I'm really enjoying it and the color as well because I don't really have anything this color in my closet. So that is the Mauricia Cardigan by Vert and Rose Knitting. We kind of have a self-proclaimed MVP, and this is the Harlow Sweater V-neck Edition by Kadri. If you're interested, I did an entire vlog with the making of this sweater, and I think it's one of my favorites that I get DMs and comments about from you all, and it's one of my personal favorites as well. This is knit, I believe, in the size medium. This is knit up using Roan DK from Primrose Yarn Co. in the colorway Fossil. This was also my other Rhinebeck purchase, and so this sweater is very like special to me for that reason. It was also unique for me to use. It was a merino and superwash blend. It's a 50-50 blend of non-treated and treated merino wool. I was skeptical at first. I was like, I don't really get it, but wow. First, having those two different color wools, I think one is white and one is brown, it gives you a lot of variation in the sweater without being like speckled, right? Like it just gives you like a tonality to the colors, which I really like. I think it looks more store-bought and it looks more lived in and just like casual and cool. It also gives this bouncy quality to the fabric and I think also just makes a very solid knit fabric. I don't really have anything like it but I, I really like it. It was also a splurge but the cost per wear of this has goes down drastically because I wear it so often. And I'll also say I am starting to see pilling on the sweater but I made this in April and I wore it a lot then and I wear it a lot now. So the pilling on this I thought it would be way more, but the yarn is very durable. I had a bit of a scare, I think, while making this, and I tried helical knitting for the first time, and it was not scary at all, really. I thought that some parts looked darker than the other, and I talk about it in my vlog, but I can't say that it's something that I ever think about just because of how lovely this whole sweater is. Definitely, I would just avoid the headache and do helical knitting on a bigger project if it's hand dyed yarn. I would just save yourself the hassle. Also, this was my first Kadri pattern. I thought it was very clear and well written out versus something like the Mauricia cardigan. I think it definitely is just like a designer style thing or more like like instructions where it's like, okay, just do this. You know how to do it, like figure it out. Where I think Kadri kind of walked you through it more. The Whitmore cardigan kind of walks you through it more. This would be a great beginner pattern. You get to do both, I think, some short row shaping. It has this really fun eye cord detail on the shoulders. It helps it give it a good fit and um, with the sloping, but it also just gives that kind of elevated design element. I'm always looking for those little things in my sweaters that make them stand out, maybe make them look a little more store-bought. A store-bought vibe is not my end goal. It's nice to have sometimes. And then the sweater is finished with two by two ribbing, which I think is the most like delicious part of the sweater. I think it's 
had its moment this year and I would definitely knit more things with Chew by Chew ribbon. It makes a more visual impact and for a plain stockinet sweater, having a little extra interest can go a long way. And I love it. I wear it so much. It is the perfect sweater. The next thing that I have is a houseware. It is this little square pillow that I made. This is what I'm calling the excavation pillow. I organized my yarn stash this spring and I had just a lot of like truly scrap yarn. I don't have enough to like make into a blanket or into a sweater, but I did have enough to make into a pillow. I hacked this blanket pattern a little bit by making two squares of a equal size. And then I made sure that I left the enough fringe when I changed colors. When I put this together, I could just tie the knots all around the edge. It was a really fun way to get rid of scrap yarn. I love the randomness of this pillow. I love the colors. It makes me very happy. Sometimes it's on my bed, sometimes it's on my couch. I did fill this with scrap yarn and it's not like the most shapely pillow. I feel like it could look more pillowy. Part of that is due to the stretchiness of the fabric itself. and It's not like lined or anything. And I did just use scrap yarn in here. So maybe if you use polyfill or maybe like old t-shirts or something, it would round out nicer. But it's something that really bothers me because this was a fully scrap project, which I thought was great. Also like my Pride Month make, so it was all good. It was all fun. I love this pillow. It makes me so happy. This is just a boost of serotonin whenever you see it. I have, I think, some Ravelry notes if you want to recreate it. More pillows in 2024. We are firmly now in to summer. I feel like this is going quicker than my year felt. And I have a few summery tops to go through. So I'm going to change. I always get the name of this tank top wrong, always, but this is the My Little Secret Crop by Jessie May. I actually usually don't wear a bra under this, but just for like ease of changing today, we left it on. And this is made in the size small and knitting for all of Cotton Merino in the colorway Cole, which I don't know if they sell anymore. It's kind of like a grayish black. This is a very simple basic. This is probably the most basic-y, basic essential piece of clothing I made this year and I got lots of wear out of it. Uh, like I said, I don't have to wear a bra, especially if I'm like around the house. It's just like a comfortable top in that way. And it's made in three by three ribbing with I-cord straps. It's very simple. I made one last year and I really liked the fit of it and I wanted to have another go. It was a medium. And so I wanted to make it even smaller because I found how that tank top stretched over time. I made it smaller and I just wear it a lot under items. Sometimes would wear it just by itself, but especially if I'm working during the day, like I would just wear this and then be able to throw a button up over it. I also think I got my order wrong. I remember I made this tank top and then I made the pillow because I made this boring black tank top and I was like, please, I need some color. And then I made the pillow, but I feel like that makes logical sense, right? By far, not the most exciting thing that I made this year. It serves its purpose and it serves it well. I think it's definitely in the running for a most worn tank top. And sometimes you just need those essential items. The one thing I always know with Jessie Mae patterns is that I often find torso length is quite short. I think I even ended up knitting this longer and like this is cropped. Always just be mindful about that when you're selecting yarn. Just like add in some extra yardage if you don't want a very cropped top. It's just like an easy summer tank and it fits, which would become an issue later in my summer making. Perfect segue into the next top. If you're an avid viewer with photographic memory, you may remember that I made this top last year. This is the Ingrid Top by Gregoria Fibers. It is knit in Saniscarn Line, and I revamped this top this year. As another part of my spring cleaning, I took an evaluation of my knitted wardrobe and did a like frog fix or get rid of review. And this was on the fix list. Originally, when I made this top last year, it was way too big. It had an unhelpful amount of positive ease. The armholes came down like past my bra. They were so wide. There was all this extra fabric and I just decided to fix it. I did that by ripping back and then I rejoined the tank top at a higher length. 
and then I just knit like normal. The other thing that I fixed was the finishing on the arms. So the original one has you do stockinette and then you do a Russian bind off and I found it curled in a really like unfinished way although it was technically finished and so I decided I wanted to go for what the top and the bottom go for. So it's folded over stockinette so it's the same down here and it's the same up here and I did the same on the armpit. I also feel like the other finishing didn't do anything to kind of bring the armpit in. And I always call it the armpit. It's really an armhole. To bring the armhole in. And this kind of helped cinch it a little. Like that drapiness you get. This is like a cotton linen viscose yarn. So like you're going to have mad drape with plant fibers. And sometimes you need some kind of construction to tell where to go. I still feel like I don't wear this tank top. And I've realized I think it is because of the color. I'm not tan right now. But... Even with a tan, I feel like this washes me out. I'm looking in my screen and I feel washed out. That's part of our reason, I think, why this didn't work. This is an example of a color that I think is very beautiful, but I don't feel necessarily so beautiful in it. That is my little fix-up. Yes, I'm including it because I did knit it this year. I knit on it, so, and I bound off this year on it, so. I don't know, do the math. We're on to our next top. After finishing the Ingrid top, I was feeling good. I was like, oh yeah. I made a summer top that fit me and that feels great and I would like to keep doing that because I like when my clothes fit me well like any other human really I ran into so many issues trying to get things to fit me well this year I will get into the dress saga later however and at one point when trying to find a pattern for this yarn this is terrapin fibers cotton I believe it's either I think this is the Potomac now, this is the Chesapeake DK in the colorway Fennel. It's gorgeous. It doesn't even look like as bright as it does in this lighting right now, but it's a very bright poppy green, greenish yellow, grello, one may call it. And I decided, fuck it, we're doing it live. I'm going to self-draft a pattern. I'm going to figure it out because none of the patterns I was trying seemed to look right they didn't fit right i find that sometimes for me a lot of summer patterns have like way too much positive ease i don't necessarily want a big bellowy tank top but i don't necessarily need something like suffocating me either i don't know it doesn't swallow me it fits right it's bra friendly i feel like sometimes it's too much to ask to find a pattern that works so i have some detailed ravelry notes Someone even recreated this tank top, which I think is pretty cool. And this is knit in Broken Rib. I did a top-down approach, so I believe I knit the back panel first, and then I picked up for these straps. I was going for a square-ish neck. It's, like, more roundish. <laughs> I also did a little split hem, which I think is really fun for the summer. Next to the black tank top, I probably wear this one the most out of summer items. I feel really happy when I wear it. The color is not looking right, but I'll, I'll insert some pictures of what the color really looks like. It was also harkening back to one of the big themes for me this year, which was texture. And I really like broken rib. I might have to make another one for myself this summer because it was just like an easy make and I get a lot of wear out of it. I think it fits like a glove. It is actually bra friendly, like for the most part. And then all the finishing on the collar and the armpit are just applied eye cord. And then I ended up just doing a normal bind off on the bottom. It's not easy being grello. It's not easy knitting a top that fits, apparently. But we did it. And I'm very proud of myself for that. Last year, a comment on one of my videos was skip the part where she pats herself on the back for 10 minutes. And I feel like I might get that comment again. But if you're back, hey. Okay. We're back on the tops that don't fit B. <laughs> This is the June Top by Petite Knit. This is another Terrapin Fiber Works yarn. If you don't know Terrapin Fiber Works, they're a Maryland-based dyer, and they do all plant-based fibers. So that one was 100% cotton. This is a cotton linen blend, but they do tencel. They do a cotton boucle. Like, they do a lot of cool work over there, and I just love plugging them because I think their yarn is beautiful, and they're doing something that not a lot of other dyers are doing. This is in the colorway Onion. And this is, I think, the June top in a size small. I don't know if there's really anything right about this tank top. I have not worn it since I finished it. It's simultaneously too big in some parts, but also too small in others. This part, I think, is what tries to make it bra-friendly. 
I would honestly prefer if there was less fabric here. I also think I need a little bit more drape in this to let fabric kind of like do what it's supposed to do. It just like is not right. And I think I honestly, I might just have to frog it and make one of these again with this this year because it's not singing for me. I think the strap length is too short. The armpits are too high. I think what I went, where I went wrong with this is I probably picked the wrong size and I just like wasn't paying attention. I think I was getting a little burnt out on my summer knitting when we got to this point and I just wanted to make sure that I used this yarn. That's another thing about me. Having too much extra excess yarn in my stash like makes me anxious. It's also like having a lot of unread books in my house. I like, I just like do it. Like I want to get it done and I want to finish it. Even let the armholes unfinished. I did the eye cord up here and here, but like this would make it almost unwearable. I feel like if I finished it, it's just not that nice. I think I picked the wrong size. I don't think I would recommend this pattern. It's more touch and go all around for summer tanks. Well, I think when it comes to making things size inclusive, it's really hard to find size inclusive summer patterns making things that fit well so like not only are you including sizes but like it works I don't think this is necessarily like just like a petite knit problem I think it's just a, a wider knitting pattern problem just some thoughts let me know what you think this year I was also on a mission I wanted to knit a dress I had been thinking about it for a long time first was going to do was knit another petite knit pattern which was the cumulus top not the blouse but it's a tank top. It's a triangle cami that's knit in fingering white and knit it into a dress. Some people had done it and I just really loved the pictures, but I felt that in practice, it might not work out as well for me. Like, am I going to like it on my on me or do I just like how it looks on this person? I then saw that Kurt Knit, creator of the Milady's top and dress, was making her her customizable dress pattern more size inclusive. And I was like, that's great. That's an awesome option. It's a really, really like thought out pattern, the Milady's dress. It has a calculator. It includes four different measurements over the points of your body. And it's knit in knitting for olive pure silk. I had so many gauge issues trying to figure out how to make that dress fit me. It was way too big, even though my gauge swatching was accurate. How I knit my gauge swatch and how I knit the dress like were wildly different. You also had to do a provisional cast on, which I think was also messing my gauge up. Again, I talk about that all my podcast episodes this year. I was having a lot of issues with it. A little like career crisis in the middle of the year when I was making the dresses and I said, I just wanna make a dress by gosh, I'm just going to do it. Like I put the Milady's dress aside and I decided to knit the Winona dress by Sari Nordlin. This is a very different pattern in that it's more of a straight up and down style and it's knit in a bulky weight yarn as opposed to fingering weight. And this is knit in Saniscarn Teak Line and I guess I will try it on even though I don't really want to right now. So here's the dress. You can't really see a lot of it from this angle, can you? If I stand on the bed, can you see it? But look at my feet. Here's the dress. This is what it looks like. You get the full body shot here. And there's a little split hem in the back. This knit in this beautiful bright pink color, which I love. It's the year of Barbie. It's the year of pink. And I have to say, knitting this dress gave me a lot of confidence. I feel I felt good about it. I think if I'm being really candid at the time, like the pictures I took in this dress, I was just like not having a good body month and I did not like the pictures of myself in this dress. But sometimes I still post pictures even though I don't like them because I'm like maybe posting pictures and people liking them will make me feel better. I'd say I recommend that. I think I've, I'm, I'm in a better place at least a little bit and I do like how this dress fits. So with this dress, it is heavy. So when you wear it over time, you can like feel it just like go down your body. It does feel kind of luxurious in that way, right? That it's like a heavy, thick fabric. I also added some waist shaping. Bit of a misnomer to say it's straight up and down because the original pattern does include hip shaping, but it does not include waist shaping. I just did the quick maths to decrease the waist to closer to my waist size and then increase it back out. Overall, I like this dress. I got to wear it on my vacation to Italy and I feel pretty in this dress. One things I think are kind of messy or like on the finishing, I don't know if you can see it here, but in some pictures, it's like how I woven ends like isn't 
good and I don't know why. <laughs> How I joined the yarn was just I knit with two strands for like four stitches and then I went back to one and I think in between that method and the weaving like it just kind of left like I don't know if you can see you can see it here it just left this kind of like you know it doesn't look nice it doesn't look put together so I think that's the only thing I would do differently and I believe I need a size medium in this dress but it's a quick knit it is fun it is heavy, it does grow. So one thing that I may add over time is maybe some elastic in between the straps and maybe even around here, just to kind of like give some structural integrity to the dress. Because at the end of the day, knits are going to stretch, that's what they do. The heavier your knits are, the more they will stretch. Sassy is rubbing up against the tripod. Like if you knit a dress in bulky weight yarn, it's gonna grow. But I knew that going in and overall I ended up being really happy with the project and I'm just like proud that I got the dress out of my system for the year. So that is the another dress by Sari Nordland. So I knit that dress before we went to Italy this summer and then I was traveling for two weeks, didn't really do any knitting. I'm taking like a month, three to four weeks break from knitting in the middle of the year which I think was needed. I did kind of like a content sprint in August. It was good just to take a little break creatively and then kind of come back for I knew a big project that I wanted to make. I decided to bite the bullet and make the folklore cardigan, which I think is kind of the piece de resistance of my year. It was a really good way to end the year, and I'm so excited to share this sweater with you. I haven't showed it yet in a podcast episode all finished. I showed it on Instagram, but this is the finished object, and I'm in love. I wore it so much over the Christmas break. And this is the Folklore Cardigan by Amy Gunderson. I knit the size small. It's knit in Kelborn Woolen Scout in Natural and Charcoal Heather. I had some issues with the buttons, so I didn't fix it. So just please ignore it. I'm going to fix it. Don't worry. Buttons surprisingly give me a lot of trouble. This sweater took me three months to make. I'm a pretty monogamous knitter, so this is probably the longest it's taken me to complete a sweater. This is inspired by a piece of Taylor Swift merch that corresponds with the Folklore album, which is one of my top five favorite albums of all time. And in my first knitting plans video, which I really wouldn't ask you to go back and watch, I said I wanted to make this sweater and I'm so happy that I finally did. I ended up choosing the Amy Gunderson pattern because one, it's knit in a DK weight as opposed to the Erin weight of the Lion Brand pattern. And two, it has just more size options, which I'll always just like try to go for. Oh my gosh, this sweater, it's so pretty. It's knit in panels. So you knit five panels, back two fronts, two sleeves, and then you add the button band. And it took a while. This one was a bit of a doozy. It was touch and go. No major mistakes were made. I think there is one row in the back where I cabled one round too early. I don't even know if you can see. look how pretty that is. I don't even know if you can see it. And then I did make a mistake on the sleeve. This little cable should be on the inside for both sides, but then I knit one section wrong. So you can see here on this side, the little cables on the outside. And then I was like halfway through the first sleeve when I noticed that and I said, we're doing both sleeves wrong. And you can't really tell because that like this is on like the inside of my arm. I'm not looking there. Are you looking there? I have to say, I was really excited about this yarn. I think it really makes the cables pop. It was beautiful to work with. It's like stretchy and like bouncy and was so awesome. And I think it made such beautiful cables. However, I have to tell you that I am noticing like pilling with this that say I didn't really notice so early on in something like my Harlow sweater. So that's something to note. I'm not too deterred by it. It is a two-ply wool. I think this is just me learning. I know I think the more plies that you have, the less likely you are to pill. So two plies probably like isn't a lot. Nothing that a little sweater shaver can't fix, but I don't know if you can see, like there's already, already pilling here. Sweaters are gonna grow and they are going to pill. I'm just in love with this sweater either way. I'm not even that upset about it. That is the folklore cardigan. It took me a while to knit, but oh boy, was it so worth it. The only other thing is I seamed everything up with a crochet seam. Why haven't I been doing that before? It was way easier. It was way less intimidating. The thing I'd probably do is at least seam my steam my edges before seaming. 
steam my edges before steaming just to make it all even that much easier. Really like ended up liking how this came together. I love the structure of a seam sweater. Not sure if I'll be making one again next year but this is just like even if you don't even like know who Taylor Swift is I think this is just like a, such a classic looking cardigan. I love how it ended up fitting. I like that it's like a little it's like very wide necked. I didn't end up adding any like patches that the original one has. I don't think it needs it and yeah I'm just like delighted in this sweater. I think it's amazing and it makes me so happy. So that is the folklore sweater. The last thing that I made this year which was a gift was the sweet shop blanket. My cousin is having a baby and I gave it to her for Christmas. Baby is expected in February so I hope to get some other knits for him in the meantime. But really quickly, I knit the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose in Barocco Ultra Wool. And I, it was a worsted weight yarn. I did not follow what the pattern specifies, which is to like weigh your squares so that you kind of like meet the gauge that she had. I just kind of like wung it, which you can also do too. So if you're okay with not getting the exact measurements that she lays out in her blankets. So I ended up doing 20 squares instead of 24 for our baby size. And with the worsted weight and it being super wash, it like grew wonderfully. And I think it's like a very good sized blanket for a baby. And it was just like so meditative and relaxed Talk about a really thorough, well done pattern. Perfect for beginners if you want to learn how to pick up stitches, how to do short rows. It's all in garter strip stitch. It's squishy and lovely and fun and delightful. I would recommend it. I was so excited to finally do one of Laura Penrose's patterns and the hype is totally, totally well earned. Um, what a great pattern. That was what I made finally. And I'm working on, I wanted to finish the scarf, but I didn't finish the scarf. That's okay. And that is everything that I knit in 2023. If you made it to this far in the video, if you made it to this far in my content, I just want to say that I really appreciate you all being here. It's a small, but like really engaged group. I just have so much fun. Like this is what I look forward to doing. This is my creative outlet. Thank you always for your thoughtful input and your discussions and your support. I look forward to creating and collaborating more with you all in the new year. And I'm also just wishing you health and happiness in 2024. The best new year to all of you. Stay tuned for more knitting fun this year. All right. I'll see y'all later. Bye.